Welcome to the show. I am your host, Misty Doan, and I'm very excited about today's project. We're going to be making this easy quilted zipper bag. It has a set-in zipper here on the top, and I'm really excited because we're using our fancy zips that now come in at 24 inch length. So they're perfect for bags and larger projects, um, you know, even larger project bags. We've used these a lot and now they're in longer lengths with lots of different fun colors and patterns. So I've got this finished bag here and this is um, made using Hope and Bloom by Catherine Linnaeus for Riley Blake Designs and it is just a beautiful line. Um, to honor breast cancer awareness and, you know, is perfect for breast cancer survivors or those who are battling it as well. And so you're going to need um, two fabrics, one for the outside and then another for the lining and the straps. So for the outside, you need three quarter yards and you need one and a quarter yards of that complimentary. You also need your 24 inch fancy zip and a package of the single sided Interform Plus from Bozel. So this is the package that me measures um, 36 by 58. And so this is gonna give you plenty to make your bag. So make sure you pick up all of those things and then let me show you how we made this because it's very, very easy. So um, for my step outs, I decided to show this in a different fabric. So you can see how cute this is going to look no matter what fabric you choose. So this is actually this beautiful Coneflower print um, from the Love Always by Anna Maria Horner, sorry, for Free Spirit Fabrics. And I just love this collection, it's beautiful. So to begin, you're going to cut two 20 inch squares of both your outside print and your inside lining fabric. So I've got those here. I'm gonna do these coneflowers for the outside and this beautiful floral for the inside. So I've got those ready to go. And then we're going to fuse, remember there's a single side fusible, and so one side is really smooth and you can see here, and then the other side has um, like a rougher texture and that's where the adhesive is. You're gonna put that adhesive side to the wrong side of your fabric, press it down, and then you're going to quilt as desired. Because it's adhesive, you don't even have to quilt, but you can see here I did an inch and a half cross hatch um, just straight line quilting on this whole thing. And it looks really, really nice. I love how um, it doesn't detract from the print, but gives that great quilted texture. I did that both on this and on our beautiful Hope and Bloom version here. So then the next step is we're going to go ahead and make the handles. So to do that, we're going to cut a four inch strip by the width of fabric got that here and we're just going to press this in half lengthwise and then press those outer edges into the center. So let's begin by doing that. Just want to run this down. And I like to press it in half first so I have that point to press the two sides to. There we go. And now we can open this up and we've got that crease line that we can go back and fold the top edge. and then we'll come back and do the bottom edge as well. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It's very forgiving. We just want it to be close. And we are almost done there. There we go. 
And then you can fold it in half one more time because we want to enclose all those raw edges on the inside. So we'll just give this a nice press to make sure it stays folded in half again. There we go. All right, so now we need to cut a piece of our bosal foam. This is that same single-sided fusible and you're gonna cut it three quarter inches wide by 38 inches. And so that's what I have here. And we're gonna sandwich this inside of the strap that we've made. I like to go ahead and lift one of the sides and you can see we've got some extra length here and that's just what I want. I'm just gonna kind of float it and fold it over. So we're gonna come over one inch from where the bulk is of the bosal inside of the strap. So I've got this lined up here on my mat. We'll just take our ruler and measure over about an inch. Doesn't need to be exact and trim. And then we'll take that around to the other side and do the same thing. And then that way we'll get rid of our selvage edges and we can get this ready to stitch down. So again, I'm feeling the bulk of that there, measuring over one inch and trimming that off. So now you have a couple options. You can go ahead and press this in again if you'd like, but I like to just put a few pins or clips in here. So I'm gonna grab that and I've got a few clips. You can see how nicely that's just gonna hold all of our layers together. You just wanna make sure it's not bunching and just take your time to roll this under. I'm just gonna put a few of these on here so I can take this to the machine and sew this right down. Just to make sure everything is laying nicely. That's all the clips I have handy, so we'll use pins for the end here so you can see both options in case you don't have clips. And I will just pin right through the middle. And you can see how easy it is to go through that bosal. It's not hard to sew through or pin through at all. So now we can take this to the machine. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can see. And we're gonna start by stitching down on that open side all the way down the end, and then we'll come back around. And I'm, I'm not using a full quarter inch here. This is closer to an eighth inch, just that nice top stitch. And I'm using white thread, but if you wanted to match uh, your project closer, this would be a great time to do it. Just make sure you're not tugging or pulling. Let the machine guide it through. There we go. Just readjust as you go if you need to. I'm always so surprised just how um, easily this disposal sews. It's really nice. And there's our last pin. threads and now we can come back and go down the other side make sure we have um, that same line of stitching looking for that same width both directions so I'm just gonna go back down this way again be sure not to pull or tug you don't want to distort it naturally it's not a big deal we are just going to um, force it to go the way that we want uh, which you can see it, it goes back and takes its shape very nicely so let's uh, pin this in place on both of our sides I have the other handle already made and ready to go 
So what I like to do is measure down. So to put these on, we're going to find the center of our bag. And remember, this should be 20 inches wide, so I can count over 10 inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's my middle. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin there just so I don't have to go back searching for it again later. I know that's the center of my bag. And then I can measure over from that point. And I'm going to start on this side. And I like to measure over four inches to the inside of my strap. And so you can see once this is all finished, it, it measures right at an inch. And so that's going to lay right between the four and five inch mark on my um, ruler. And I'm just going to put the raw edge that we left on the end of our bosal. I'm folding that under and then flipping the uh, you know, handle upwards. And then I'm gonna put a pin in there to move this out of the way now and pin this in place. And so then we're gonna make sure this isn't twisted or doing anything crazy. And we can again take our ruler, measure over one, two, three, four, set this right between the four and the five. And now I can take my center pin and pin that in place. And we're gonna do this exact same thing. I'll show you one more time on the other side of the bag and then we'll stitch these straps in place. So we're gonna get some more pins. So I have those handy. We're gonna find our center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the middle of my bag. Put a pin in there. And I lay this ruler right along the edge of my fabric. And then measure over. Oh, there it went. I lost the strap for a second. Measure over between the four and the five. Pin this one. Make sure that the raw edges aren't poking out. I don't know if you guys could see that, but there was a little spot poking through there. And then same on this side. Make sure we're not twisted. And between the four and the five. And there we go. So now we're just going to do some simple square stitching. I'll follow the um, lines that I already put onto the straps. And then I'm going to just make a box over that bulk that we flipped under to just really hold um, my straps in place. So it's basically going to be a one inch square that I'll stitch off across the bottom of these. So let's go ahead and do that on all four edges of the strap. And you do want to make sure you're not sewing over your pin. So now that I have this under the machine, I'll go ahead and pull that pin out of my way because we never want to stitch over that. And I am going to back stitch at the beginning, follow that same stitch line, leave my needle down and pivot. Stopping at that other stitch line, rotate back up to where I started and come across. And I like to kind of back stitch all the way across that top seam and then cut my thread. So then we'll do this again on the rest of our straps. is done. We'll do the same thing with this one. Slide that pin out of the way.
You do have to kind of manage the bulk of this project a little bit, but it's not too bad at all since it's not big. And the last side here. Tried to throw my pins on the floor there. All right, there we go. Now we have our straps attached to the body of our bag. And so now we can put these right sides together. Oh, I forgot to point out earlier, but you can see it on here. I cut the bosel just a half an inch smaller than the bag fabric. So remember this is 20 inches square. I cut the bosel at 19 and a half so that I'm not dealing with the bulk and all of my seams when I'm building this bag. So be sure to do that. And then we're just going to stitch um, down the sides and across the bottom to enclose this. Just make sure that your straps are in the middle. You do not want to catch those and in your, in your seams, you can pin them to the middle if you're worried about it, but I think you'll be able to tell if it's in your way. And so we are just going to line these up and so down the sides. I like to do both sides and then come back and do the bottom just in case I have any shifting that the tops will be nice and straight. can see by doing it this way, we don't have any of the bulk of the bosel um, under the needle. We're not stitching through that at all. There's that side. And we'll come back again, make sure our straps are not anywhere close to where we're going to be stitching. And then we'll stitch down this other side. We can go back and sew the bottom. I could feel my strap peeking through there, so I'm just going to push that up to the top. Okay, there is that. So now the outside of our bag is almost done. We just need to box the corner. Now, if you're not familiar with that, what that means is we're going to pinch the bottom edge of this bag and open it up like this on our mat. So let me grab a larger ruler here so you can see what I'm gonna do. And so you're, you're gonna make sure your seams are lined up top and bottom, going right down the middle of this point that we're forming. And then if you have a nice uh, large either square or you know six by 24 ruler, we're gonna use that 45 line and we're gonna measure down three inches. And what that's going to do is give us a six inch box across the bottom here. And so I'm actually gonna get a marking pin. You can use any type of pin because this isn't gonna show, but we're just gonna go ahead and mark all the way across here. So you can see this is gonna measure over one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can just mark this with my marker. And then we're gonna take that to the machine and we're gonna sew right on that marked line and then we'll do this on the other side. 
You do want to back stitch at the stop and the start. Let me show you again on the other side. Remember, pinch that so that it will lay nice and flat and your seams are lined up top and bottom. And we'll use our ruler, measure down three inches. There we go. Had to find my mark. Make sure we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a little crooked, so I'm just gonna straighten that out and we can mark across there. There we go, and we'll stitch on that line. Okay, so once you've done that, you have a couple of options. If you want a really sturdy bottom of your bag, you can just fold this over and put a couple of um, hand stitches in there to hold that in place. And that's just gonna give extra stability to the base of your bag. I find with this bosal, you don't really need that. So I'm just gonna cut off the bulk of this. Um, just measure over at least a quarter of an inch, probably closer to a half inch, just to make sure we don't lose our seams. So I'm just gonna trim that off. We can throw that away and then do the same on the other side here. You can see the bosal is really wanting to stand up and give the bag its shape. So it does take a little bit of working with, but it cuts through so easily as you can see there. So now our the outside of our bag is pretty much ready to go. So we can quickly um, follow a lot of these same steps to do the inside. The lining measures the same 20 inch squares, but what we're gonna do is add a pocket inside. So let me show you how we do that. We've got our two lining squares here. And to add the pocket, you're gonna cut two six by nine rectangles out of the exact same fabric. And so I've got those here. We're gonna place them right sides together. And I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam all the way around, leaving about a three inch opening on one side. So I'm gonna start and back stitch, and stitch all the way around and stop and back stitch. If you wanna put a pin in both places, you can do that. Um, but just, you know, remember, and it won't be a problem. So I'm gonna start right here. All right, so we back stitched there at the beginning. I like to just sew off the corner pivot, so all the way down the side. I feel like I have uh, more square, neat edges, more precise corners when I just sew off rather than try to pivot. Okay, so this is our last little bit. We have to remember to leave that opening back stitch there. Okay, so now I like to always go back and cut off a little bit of bulk in those corners just so um, my corners turn easier, but you want to make sure you don't ever stitch or cut through your stitches. So we're just going to hang over there and trim. You can see it's just a tiny bit we're taking off, but we want this to look nice. And so now we can open up through our little pocket that we created by leaving that opening. And you can either use a chopstick. I've got nails that I can use to go and poke out these corners. And so I just kind of do that as I go. Whatever you need to do to get in there and make sure your corners are nice and sharp. Just like so, and one more. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And now we can take this over to the iron and we'll give it a press. And you do want to kind of roll back your seams to make sure that they're all laying as neat as possible. 
so you don't have any um, anything tucked underneath there when you're pressing. Just take your time. And I like to fold in this little bit that is um, from our opening because we're going to top stitch over that in just a minute. So I'm just going to fold that under so it's nice and straight and then press it so I don't have to fight with it at the sewing machine. So now remember that's our side with our opening. We're going to do that top stitch right along that edge. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. There we go. So now that's fully enclosed. We don't have to worry about that opening creeping up on us again. And we are going to measure down on our bag. You can really just eyeball this. There is no um, exact place this has to be, but I like to measure down at least five inches. So I'm just going to use my mat here and go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move that up a little bit and then also find my center. And I just kind of eyeball this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's the middle. And if I want to, you know, you can fold a crease in there. And I know that's pretty spot on with the middle. You can measure down if you want. But it's inside my bag, so I am happy to just eyeball it. And so now we're going to add some stitch lines and um, attach this onto this lining. So we're going to stitch all the way around and then I'm going to measure over an inch and then two and a half to create a couple of pockets within the pocket to hold different things like pins and your cell phone. So let's do that. So we're going to start by just stitching on the sides and the bottom to attach this to the lining square. Being sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And I just keep my needle down and pivot. And back to the top here. Finish it with the back stitch. All right, so then let's make a few marks for our Next stitch lines. Is my marker still out here? It is. All right. So we can just measure over one, and I think I actually did an inch and a half now that I'm looking at it. But you can totally do this to your preference. If you have a favorite pin or something, you can just um, lay it on there and test it out to make sure you're going to have plenty of room. I'm just going to mark an inch and a half, and then I'm going to go right along that line I just made over two and a half from there. And then you can see that's going to leave a nice big pocket on this side for my cell phone. So we're just going to add those two straight lines. Again, making sure we backstitch at the top and the bottom. There we go. So now our pocket is attached inside of our lining. So let's talk about how we're going to add the zipper because that's kind of the magic of this bag. So for a second, I'm just going to set these to the side and pull out my pieces. There's quite a few pieces. I know that. But we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to cut out two two and a half by 18 and a half inch rectangles. And we're gonna sew those the exact same way we sewed the pocket. We're just gonna put them right sides together, just like this. And we're gonna stitch all the way around. So let's start by doing that. Again, we're gonna leave a little opening to turn this right sides out. Just wanting to make sure we don't have any um, raw edges peeking through on our final product. And I'm just using a quarter inch seam here. We 
with a good size opening so that we can turn this out and trim off all of our corners. There we go. And one more. This is one where it's handy to have like a chopstick, which I have right here. It's hard to get my fingers all the way to the end of that. So if you have something that you can use to turn out the points, it's gonna make it much easier for you. Just don't wanna push through them. And we'll turn this side and do the same thing. And now let's give this a press. Again, we're gonna try and tuck the little uh, pieces that are sticking out from where we're turning it under so that we can enclose those when we stitch this down later. Let's press it nice and flat. Okay, so we have that piece done. That's gonna be one side of our zipper and I've gone ahead and made the other side. I, they're done the exact same way, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and prep our zipper now and put the little ends on it because we're gonna cut off the factory ends and cover them with fabric. So you're gonna need um, a little two and a half by two inch rectangle. And all we're gonna do on this is just fold in our sides. Let me move this out of the way for now so you can see. We're just gonna fold all four edges under about a quarter of an inch, just like so, just like so. And then these two as well. And then we're gonna fold this in half. And you're gonna make two of these, one for each end of your zipper. So you can see we're really just folding under those edges to make sure, again, that our raw edges are enclosed. And now we can trim our zipper to 18 inches. Remember this is 24 inches, so you could make a larger bag if you wanted. Um, to begin with, I'm gonna take the zipper head and move it to the middle because I wanna make sure that I am not gonna cut that off because if I do, then my zipper is not gonna work anymore. So I've got it to the middle, and then we can go over here and cut off this metal stop because we're not gonna need that anymore. So there's that, just don't cut through the metal, but your rotary cutter will um, cut through these nylon zippers, no problem. And then we need this to measure 18 inches. So I've got this on the two, which means I need to come over here to the 20 and just keep it as straight as possible and we're going to trim that off just like so. And now we can enclose each end of our zipper in these little pockets that we've made and they should fit right in there. We can just fold this over and begin by just top stitching right across the zipper so that we don't have any um, raw edge of that hanging out or raw edge of our fabric. So I'm just gonna take this over here. You can put a pin in here, or again, this is a great place to use a clip. And we're just gonna top stitch over this side, and then we're gonna go back and do the same thing on the other end of the zipper. There's that one. You can back stitch over it a bunch if you're worried about it. I just did a single line. Here's our other side. Sandwiched right in there. And you can see if you're worried about um, the strain that the zipper's gonna take, it's really easy to backstitch over these nylon zippers. And so now, our zipper is enclosed in these little ends. We can slide it all the way down. We don't have to worry about it sliding off either direction. It's good to go. Um, and now we're just going to lay this 
on our long pieces that we've made here, and we're going to sew a straight, a straight stitch or, or decorative stitch, whatever you um, desire, straight down either side of this to sandwich our zipper between these two side pieces we've made. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back here. All right. So now we have our zipper all the way attached to our extensions on the side there, and now we can set this into our lining pieces. So remember, we've got our pocket. We want to make sure we orient our pocket to the top, and then we're going to measure down two and a half inches. So you can use your two and a half inch ruler here, makes it really handy. And we are going to pin this in place. We're going to center it on our bag. We're going to pin this and then we're going to top stitch right there. So I'm going to start with one side. We'll sew this one down and then we'll come back and add the other side. Now we don't have a pocket or anything on the other side, so we can just open this up. And again, we're gonna measure down our two and a half inches. Center this on here. And we're just gonna let the um, right side of the fabric be towards the other right side. And center this on here. Oops. And put a couple pins in place. And then we'll top stitch this side. All righty. So that part is done. We are not going to stitch down the sides. They're, those are going to remain open. And now just like we did on the outside of our bag, we're gonna um, sandwich this right sides together and we're gonna sew the three sides. The only difference is on the lining, we wanna leave about a six to eight inch opening on one side. So I am going to put a couple of pins in here just to remind myself that I don't wanna close this all the way up. And I also wanna make sure my zipper's a little bit open. That'll help, all of this is gonna help with the turning this right sides out. So we're just gonna line this up just like so. I'm gonna put one pin here. That's gonna be the top of my opening. And I'm gonna put another pin down here for the bottom of my opening. I wanna make sure it's not uh, too close to the bottom because remember we're still going to box these corners to match the outside. So I'm just going to start on this opposite side and stitch down.
gonna get too close to that, so I'll just back stitch and then pull that out of the way and slide all the way up to my other pin. Now we're going to go ahead and box those corners in the exact same way we did the outside of the bag. So we're going to measure down three inches and across six. We're just going to pinch this open just like so. I like to use our square ruler here. We are going to mark that all the way across. I'm just going to go ahead and mark both sides, put a pin in there to hold it where it needs to go so that I can make both of these seams at once. go. And we'll stitch across there. getting so close to the end now. Let's trim off this bulk. On the other side. Alright, so we've got our box corners done. We're going to leave this one inside out and we're going to take the outside of our bag and we're going to turn it right sides out now. So you can see, we finally get a little glimpse of how this is going to look. So cute with these cone flowers. And now we're going to um, stuff this entire thing inside of our lining. And this can be a little bit tricky because remember we have that zipper in there, but it's just going to go inside the whole thing. And you want to make sure the straps are on the sides that they need to be on. You don't want to get those twisted. And then we're going to line up the side seams of both the lining and the bag exterior. And we're going to pin those in place. Here. And on the opposite side, because we want all of those to match nicely. And then we are just going to top stitch all the way around this edge. And this is why it was so important to leave that opening in the lining, because we're going to enclose this entire top edge. So let's take this to the machine and do that. You do have a lot of bulk. Make sure your straps are completely out of the way. That's why we set them down from the top so that they're plenty of inches away from where we're trying to stitch. And you do want to make sure you back stitch quite a bit on this top seam just because that is, that's the 
the meat and potatoes of this bag is right there at the top. So we just take our time and realign as we go around. You can see it just takes a little bit of maneuvering. So just take your time. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that pin now that I've stitched over that side. And the closer you get to the end, the more it um, realizes what you are trying to do and it just kind of flattens out. Pull out that last pin because we're making our final curve here. Keep everything nice and tidy. And back stitch at the end. And then from that hole that we left in our lining, we can pull all of this through. That's why you want to make sure you don't uh, give yourself too small of a hole because the, there's, you know, an entire bag we're going to turn through that. So, like I said, a nice six to eight inch opening and just take your time and you can easily work that through there. And then, voila, all of that is going to stuff down inside the bag. You can press this top edge and give it a nice uh, top stitched finish like we did here. And that is that. It is so easy. I love both of these beautiful collections. I do want to point out one more time these cute zippers. This pink one that we used on the um, Hope and Bloom collection even has little hearts and breast cancer ribbons on it. And the purple one that's in here has little sewing machines on it. It's very, very cute. Um, I love these fancy zips. And I hope you guys enjoyed this easy quilted zipper bag. I'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.